yes. Hello, everyone. This is Abdullah Samir. Uh, you are on the Abdullah Samir show, if you can call it that. I have never given it a name. And I'm with Noor Ilani. Uh, Noor is a, a friend of mine we met online uh, not too long ago. And he wanted to have a conversation. He's gone through a lot of my material. Uh, Noor, can you just introduce yourself? Tell, tell us like what you believe, um, why you believe the Quran, like what, how you want to introduce yourself. I, I know you, you're a professor, you're a professor actually. So if you can just start with like your background maybe. Okay, so I'm not a private, I'm not, I'm not a public lecturer. I'm like, I'm a, more of a private lecturer. So I teach university students but public, privately. So my name is Noor. Uh, I'm a Muslim. I'm a revert actually. I'm a revert. I left Islam for like a couple of years. I think like four or five years, something like that. Oh, wow. So, yeah, but I came back to Islam because I noticed some stuff that's uh, irrefutable, to be honest. To be honest with you, like, for example, uh, when a baby is born or when a, an animal is born, it has some instincts. Someone teach this animal these instincts. It didn't come by natural selection. So there's something more that we don't know yet. So that's what really attracted me to God, not to Islam. It didn't prove to me that there's Allah, Yahweh, or whatever, or Jesus. doesn't matter. I just believe that there's a higher being because, like, there's day, there's night. There's, like, everything that's going around us. There, we don't see it because we never reflect upon it. But if you reflect upon it, we will see. Later, we'll go into arguments and we'll see. So just to go back into your background a little bit, um, do you want to talk about like what you study just to get some some little bit of background where you're living right now, uh, what your personal interest, you know, something just a little bit okay. more about yourself. Um, Would you like to just share a little bit? I'm originally from Lebanon, uh, but currently I live in Belgium. I studied engineering, industrial engineering. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, and you, was, you said so you were born a Muslim in a Muslim family. Yeah, I was born. What, what caused you to leave Islam? You know, just doubts. Okay. Just doubts. To be honest with you, like when when we when we look at the Quran, it's just so ambiguous. It's like and a whole world. You know, even for us Arabs, at, at school we le we learn like standard Arabic. We don't learn classical Arabic. So there are some words that we didn't we don't even understand. In order to understand them, you need to study classical Arabic. So we study standard Arabic, which is the modern Arabic, and we speak dialect Arabic. We don't speak classical, neither mod standard. So I was like, it doesn't make sense. So like, like Fusha, you're saying you're talking about Fusha, right? Like the, yes, about Fusha, the, but the modern Fusha. In the Quran, it's classical Fusha, it's the old one. Right. So modern, standard, and there's like the old, the classical, which is like the grammar is too high. So, so specifically, what was it that caused you to, like you said, you actually left Islam. It wasn't like you just had doubts. You actually were not a Muslim. Yeah, doubts took me to leave and, Islam. And what were the doubt? Like, what was the nature of the doubts? What was like, the topic? For example, in the Quran, like when it says, well, Ardu Sutihat, and when the earth is spread out, you know, I didn't dip, in, dip into the language. I didn't go. You didn't dive in. And like I said, I just said, Earth is flat, that's it. Error in the Quran, I'm out. In Arabic, we say, like, khalas, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have to pray five times anymore. I don't have to fast. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to believe in anything. So I'm free. Mm -hmm. so and I didn't reflect, but then I was like, I must reflect. Maybe I'm wrong because, you know, that's, that's what's good about scientists, that they are inconsistent. They know for a fact that they could be wrong. And that's why science is always changing, always changing. And I'm old, I'm open to the fact that I could be wrong now. Maybe I'm, mm -hmm. maybe you're wrong. Maybe someone's watching is wrong. Maybe Absolutely. Not. And I, I think, you know what, the fact that you're actually committed to the truth, that you are actually willing to change your position. I'm healing myself a little bit. If you can uh, just turn down the volume a little mm -hmm. bit. Or uh, yeah, mute it. Um, yeah. So the fact that you know, like, there's a bunch of like really amazing things about you. Uh, first of all, the fact that you're willing to have this conversation publicly is 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 quite courageous um, and and impressive, right? And you know, you you contacted me and you said let's have a conversation. So you're you're actually willing to 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 challenge to to look into what you believe. Uh, you were willing to change your position. A lot of people say. Oh, you know, you can't trust this guy. He changed his mind. He changes his mind all the time. But actually, like you said, changing your mind 
I mean, as long as you actually have done the research and you have a good reason to, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's a sign of being open-minded. Um, but they say, you know, don't be too open-minded that you let your, your brain fall out. Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. but at the same time, you do need to be like, if someone is not willing to ever change the position, do you, I mean, you must know people like that, right? They're, they're like, oh, I'm never going to, yeah. Uh, and it's they not just... Behind. And it's not just Muslims, right? It's also it's also atheists. Sometimes they're like, oh, definitely. I know, I know for sure this is a final. This is correct, and I'm not gonna. Like, I know some it. people that like, even if God Himself came, I'm here. Look, I'm here. Or like, tomorrow He said, on this sand, on this place, like He was talking to Himself alone. I want God to say, I am here. <laughs> it's written. They put it in the news. No, someone put it. Someone was listening to me. You know, like. They just make an excuse to. I yeah, I I laugh at that too. Because when I hear people say, um, "God, if you exist, come down to me right now, like right here," right? And it's like it's hilarious. Like you haven't disproved God. Like what if, what if God doesn't want to come down to you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you. That your senses can trick you also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a holograph or I don't know something like that. Your senses, you can't trust your senses. So, so how do we know then, like, if something is truly from God? Like, what's, what's the reason how we would know that? First, first, we need to know if there is a God. Mm -hmm. We don't need to believe that first, like, uh, what is from God. First, we need to know if there is a God from the beginning. You know, so I believe in, like, there are, like, four arguments, whether there's a God or not. Uh, the first argument, it is, like, about the universe, to be honest. The universe was created from nothing or... It created itself, you know, it came to existence by creating itself. Or it was created by something else that is created. Or it was created by something that is uncreated. Do you agree with these arguments or do you have any? Um, there's, did you mention that the universe may always just exist? It may have always existed? Well, this is definitely not an option because... It can, it's impossible to be eternal, like science also tells us. It's so, so the science, the science aside, I, I do think, okay, the science doesn't say for sure that the universe cannot be eternal. It does say, okay, it does say there is a beginning to it, which mm -hmm. is a Big Bang. And of course, you agree with the Big Bang, right? Of course, certainly. So, so the Big Bang is well established. There's multiple evidences for it. There's Einstein's calculations. There's a background radiation. It's not established. It's you know as well. It's a more effect. Okay, sure. So, so we know that for sure. So the universe does have a beginning, but the, the the fact is we can't say what happened before the beginning. Maybe before the beginning there was another universe that actually had a great collapse, right? Like they they say the Big Crunch. So for all we know, the universe is in an everlasting, ever eternal cycle of birth and death, birth and death. So science That's doesn't possible. actually rule out, I'm sorry? It's possible, it's possible. Actually, there's an argument for that, but I, I forgot. There's like a Greek philosopher that has this argument and okay. proved that uh, there's like the universe had a beginning, it's like definite. From the universe philosophy. has a beginning, but it's has also possible that there was a universe that... So, so, Definitely. so you know, some people would, would call this like the multiverse. That's another thing. But then if you're discussing multiverse, there still has to be like like a first universe, like the container. Then you will have an infinite regress. Infinite yeah. Regress, you know, like who's the first, who's this, who created this, who created this, who created this. Yeah, there must be some original domino. So so for me, like I'm I'm willing to say that either one, the universe is eternal, and yes, there is a scientific beginning to the universe, but it, it could be cyclical. We don't know what happened. We don't know that before this universe, there was another universe, right? And we don't know, for example, when this, yeah, so that, so it is possible actually that the universe was eternal. Um, if the universe is not eternal, let's, let's, let's take that, let's take that position. So the universe was created by an uncreated. No, first we have four arguments. We have okay. to one by one so we can okay, get, sure. to, maybe we stop on the second one, you know? It's so, like there's a chance. Okay, what was so, the what was it again? The universe from nothing. You know, you read the book from uh, Professor. Oh no, I haven't. I, I heard of him. Yeah, I haven't read his book. book. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It says like the universe came from a quantum fluctuation. So. Yes. Yes. Quantum vacuum, right? Yeah. Exactly. I I think at that point, you know, when we start talking about stuff like that, we're just pretending to know what we understand. Especially exactly. me, like I'm not coming from a scientific background. I'm coming from a 
background in computer science. So um, I, I only became scientifically literate like later on in life, like more recently now. So mm -hmm. like going back to the, I, so let's just say it's possible that the universe, I, I don't even know, know how to understand that logically. It came from nothing. Um, so do you want to just go to the next one? It's impossible that it came from nothing because nothing plus nothing is nothing, you know? Yeah. And so, the definition of nothing for, for uh, scientists is the lack of space and the lack of time. Yeah. And that's not nothing. That's We call it pseudo nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing. It's pseudo something. It's yeah. Pseudo. So, so I'm, I'm with you that, like I said, if, there, if the universe came from nothing, which is what, mm -hmm. you know, Lawrence Krauss is calling a quantum vacuum, is calling nothing. Yeah. That nothing had to be there already, right? So that that quantum exactly. vacuum, that quantum form that a universe pops out of, that that may have been the and like like I said, I, I it could have been an eternal quantum form. But again, we're talking about something that was eternal again, not God. So that's another possibility. Like basically going back to what I said already. So either the universe itself is eternal, or the 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 mother of the universe, the quantum form, the the quantum mm. vacuum was there forever. I hope that's the universe is eternal. There's like a lot of uh, philosophical arguments that supports that it's not eternal. So, um, as far as I know, this is a valid position. Like I, I'm not a philosopher. It could but be. I, it could be. I'm not saying no. No, yeah. we never know. So, so let's let's look at the other possibility. Yeah. The universe so was. The second, the yeah, second possibility ahead. was it uh, created itself. Okay, that, I don't even understand what that means, created itself. So yeah, because it's like you're saying my mother gave birth to herself. Doesn't make yeah, sense. I, I don't I don't see how that, but like, I don't I just continue. Some Next one. Some people really believe in that. Yeah. They, they me. I haven't I haven't looked into it. I have a feeling that some people haven't really like researched this or really looked into the philosophical arguments. That's why they might say that. Um, but I, I would just... I would, again, I would say a viable position is the universe was always here. We don't have to say it came from nothing, but anyways, that's one idea. So let's let's continue. Okay, wait, wait. You think the universe is always here? Yes. Either the universe itself. Why can we see only thirteen point eight billion years? No. Yes, this 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 iteration of the universe may not be the 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 first one, right? There could be one before that. Exactly, that's different. Yeah, so, yeah I'm not. I don't mean this. Yeah, this universe for sure has a beginning. So clearly, there was some something that caused it to like, you know. So let's let's. So, so this universe is not eternal. It's co-created, possibly. Yes. Yeah. Co-created. Another universe or something. Like that. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not eternal. So it is created. In a yes. Way. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the third possibility was uh, was created by something else that is created. Yeah, that doesn't make sense because then oh, the universe. Yeah, because then who created the one that created it? So if something exactly. else is yeah. Just yeah. like in programming, say that's a loop, infinite loop. Yeah. So this is the idea that like somebody will say, "Well, who created God?" When somebody says that, they're not understanding that. Let me answer it. Yeah. Uh, well, this this question itself is just. Like whoever says this, to be honest, is stupid in a way. Oh, they don't understand it. <laughs> they don't understand. Because let, let me, let's say it in two points. First, God is outside time. So as we know, time is relative according to the to Einstein, right? Mm -hmm. Relativity. Yep. So yep. he's outside time. We feel time. Whoever is outside time doesn't feel time. You know? Yes, so I understand. Yep. That's the first one. And, and the second one is like, you're saying, uh, I don't know. So the problem with saying, that, so, you know, philosophers as well have kind of struggled or debated with whether yeah. God is inside time and eternal, but he's outside time. And like you said, everything is like an instant. The problem with the putting God outside time is a, a timeless God. How would he interact with the universe? Like, like we're talking about, like you know, people that make dua, and you know, people that God comes and sends prophets, and he's he's intervening with the universe, but like he's outside of time. So, how would he? You know, what I'm saying like that seems kind of like a problem. Maybe I'm not understanding it, but I know that William Lane Clegg came up with this clever kind of like God is timeless and also eternal, and yeah. came up with some complicated resolution to this. But just just from the surface. If all of the universe is one second for God, like one instant, that's fine. But then how does he, you know, how does he meddle with the, the ongoings and the people's prayers? And 
but that's one of his attributes that he's you know he's the almighty so he he knows what's going on like, we, we can't we can't we can't do that because we can't even imagine it because like we have a, a, an a sea mm -hmm. full of information you know or we have a, a whole sea is full of water you know how big is the sea and yeah. we're digging a small hole next in the sand and we're trying to put the whole sea inside that it's sand so it's irrational in what sense like what, what's irrational what do you mean like we're trying to understand god which is supposed to be the there's nothing like him you know so i i agree with you that we can't okay we can when it comes to philosophy a lot of people think that it's just mental mumbo jumbo uh, another <laughs> an, another mental masturbation is another way to put it but i i do believe that philosophy helps us to to sharpen our conceptions of what we're talking about like by by eliminating contradictory ideas like for example you gave a really good example of infinite regress so we you know a, a mother can't give birth to herself who gives birth to herself who gives that doesn't make any sense that's illogical so when when we when we're talking in terms of philosophy and we're, we're saying that you know like we we can say that this is a contradiction we can say that this is an incoherency right and to me the idea of a timeless god a god that's outside of the cosmos outside of time and space and that also is a personal god that interacts with humanity that's problematic for me i don't i don't quite get how that could work now if you're saying Why an you eternal think? god well if, if it's a god that exists in time for all of eternity even if he knows what's going to happen like he could still know what's what was going to happen based on his perfect understanding of the laws of the universe of his creation or whatever and he can still know what's going to happen and he can then intervene you know in time but if he's outside of time it, it's it's difficult to comprehend how how that makes sense because all of time is done for god like it's already done there's no there's no hold on like you know what i mean like all of it's like one instant right so anyways i don't want to get too much hung up on this one point it's just something to think about uh but let's continue because let's maybe it'll be interesting to talk about more specifics about islam go ahead go ahead yeah how, how God knows everything, or sure. how it doesn't change our, our like our life because like mm -hmm. for example, if you if you miss a football game, you know, yep, you miss a football game and then you watch it later, does it mean that the scores will change? No, it's no. just saved. So you already know the results, so you know they will win or they will lose. Who will, yes. who will, win, who will lose? But the game won't change. You already know what's going to happen, but doesn't mean that the actions will happen so you know what i mean that's, that's yeah, the same I, it makes sense to me i actually i actually have no problem with believing in a god that has you know divine foresight divine knowledge you know knowledge of everything i don't have a problem with that like that idea okay. per se right but then you know when you combine that with the idea of heaven and hell it seems to kind of bring up some problematic you know issues which is you know for me specifically and and you've read a lot of my stuff um, I have a problem with the idea that God actually created some, it seems like most of humanity to go to hell, right? Knowing That's that. That's what we think. So, okay. So based on the Quran, the Quran itself says that only a few, you know, Khalilun ma tushkurun, you know, very few will be thankful, you know, the, and the, the, many of the people that were at the time of the prophet, you know, will be the, the forerunners, right? And then like a few of them after that, right? We know that the best, the best so-called people were the people of Muhammad's time because they were the ones that that lived among the prophet and and then the ones after that, you know, that slowly, slowly were getting astray. So not only that, we know that four fifths of the world's population is not Muslim. Um, eighty percent of the world's are, are disbelievers in Islam. So to me, that's again problematic because it's like it seems like God failed because if God was going to make a message and nine eighty percent of them rejected his message. I I think that's a that's kind of like that's bad. But wait, you have you have two two things here. First, not all these eighty percent of people will go to hell. Mm -hmm. And second, we have free will. Yeah. So God wanted to force us, us in His religion, and it's in, where's our free will again? You know? So if I if I was God and i was making robots so we can even imagine this like actually happening one day where we will be able to make beings that have free will like i, I don't know if you've seen like ex machina or some of these sci-fi movies they give us an idea that it's possible to make a creation 
that has mm-hmm. free will. Now imagine I'm God. I'm, I think I'm a God. I make all these people. But I know 80% of them, or let's say 50% of them, more than 51% even, even 20%, they are going to fail the test. Now, I should actually say at that point, okay, you guys, I'm canceling your program. Done. Because if they would have existed, even if they had the best life, as the Hadith says, even if you had the life of a king, you know, and then you went to hell for one second, you'd say, I never had any goodness in my life. So I would just cancel out those people because those people wouldn't want to exist. If I knew me personally, I'm going to hell, or even someone I loved, like my son or daughter mm. was going to hell, I wouldn't want them to exist. I would say... I, have an, I would abort that child. Like if I had, I would tell my wife, we're not having this kid. If I knew that. And but God was supposedly, according to Islam, more loving to mm-hmm. you know than uh, than a mother to his uh, to her her suckling child. Like why would he go ahead and do that? Like that. It seems like a very un. It seems like a very but, evil thing to do. You see, you're you're trying. You're you're a human. We're humans at the end. Yes. Think as the same wisdom. You know okay. what I mean? We're like trying to. It's impossible. It just, it just can't. It's like maybe he sees stuff that we don't see. And in the Quran, like it says, "La yaslaha illa al-ashka." No one touches it, which is the fire. Only the worst of the worst. It means like Hitler and you know the bad, the worst of the worst. Not anyone will but, touch it. But just because you don't believe in God, you will go to hell. The problem and, is you know, in, in Islam. It's not anyone will go that doesn't believe in God will go to hell. People that received the message, understood it clearly, and rejected it, the, basically the hypocrites, these are the ones that will go to hell. Not someone never heard about Islam or heard Fox News Islam and uh, will go to hell. That doesn't make sense, you know? I, I think the whole, the whole thing doesn't make sense at all because the, the fact is that... Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so we're saying that, oh yeah, you said, okay, so you said that only people that understand the message properly would go to hell. Someone who actually got it properly and rejected it. Now, now the question is, but still, like... I think so, I don't know. Maybe okay, so, so the Quran, though, the Quran doesn't say that, like when you said, like the worst people will go to hell, but the Quran defines the people of hell as the disbelievers and the people of heaven as the believers. This this idea of people that didn't get the message, this was this was always like a kind of it's not clearly stated in the Quran. It's like a it's like a, you know a small percent that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? And now, but the thing is many Muslims now, including many scholars, Hamza Yusuf is one of them. He has a he has a book, a, a write-up, I forgot what it's called now, where he talks about like exactly what you're saying, that the people who didn't get the message properly, the only people that actually go to hell are the true kufar. Meaning, not the ones that got the wrong message, but the ones who got the message and actually rejected it. But I have to ask, who in the right mind would know the message of God and would know that they will be punished and would actually reject it? Like, that's an insane person. Isn't that insane exactly. person? So, but if that's the case, then it's, it's incoherent that anyone would reject the message. Because if you're insane, you don't deserve to be punished. You don't deserve to go to hell. Insanity is, is people, a... No, 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 it's not insane. Some people are just like, you know, I just, like they understood the message, but they are just too lazy to pray, all right? I don't want to pray. Like, it's, they are like, it's like but, they are challenging God, you know? But Look, why, but God made... Yeah, problem with me, you know? But, but didn't, the, like this, the parameters of our free will, uh, for example, um, you know, our, our ability, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in the mm-hmm. animal kingdom, the certain animals that are not able to rape, what they do is they, the woman, the female, sexually activates the male. So the male is not like, he's not interested until she comes into heat, right? Now with humans, with which we are basically apes, it's different, right? And it's different with, with for example, bed bugs. Bed bugs will, um, what's the word they use? Uh, traumatically insert the, the thing inside the female and like, create a hole in her abdomen. Like it's very painful, right? It's a very painful. And like some of the other bugs too, um, you know, ants would, would do something something like that as well. So the, so we see in nature, we see all sorts of different like variations on, on, you know, for this example. Now, the fact that we're aggressive, that aggressiveness, that sort of selfishness, that greed that we have, all of this is also tempered by, you know, the better part of humanity, which is the kindness and forgiveness and all that. But those kind of 
um, the ability to do bad was given to us by God. It's almost like giving a child a gun and saying, go ahead now. And if you, sh if you hurt somebody, not only will that person suffer, but you are going to suffer too. Like it's almost irresponsible. I, I, I feel it's almost irresponsible for God to give such a heavy gun to human beings, which is the gun of hell. Saying that, you know what, I believe, you know what I believe really, but I don't believe there's good and bad. I believe there's just like good. There's no like, like for example, like uh, darkness and light. There's nothing such darkness. It doesn't exist. Hmm. Dark is just the lack of photons. Agreed. You know? Okay. And uh, like, there's nothing such cold and warm. Cold is just the lack of heat. That's exactly the same with good and bad. If you're a bad person because you like good, yeah. it's not that you, you have bad because you're lacking the good because you went on the right and the wrong direction. Yeah. Even even then, don't don't we find that people were bad, are bad because of things that happened to them in their lives? For example, many kids that are that become bullies at home, they have like you know abusive parents, and those mm -hmm. abusive parents themselves were abused normally the cycle of violence continues from generation to generation especially if you're abused as a child you know you you will and tend to reproduce that to the next generation and and so i just feel like when it comes to um like there's so many things in our world that make us good or bad that make us you know well socialized and well adapted to social life and we, we care about other people and and some people are just born psychopaths like there's even there's some research that shows that it's possible to detect psychopathy from a child sociopathy even in a child by looking at for example like the eye movement and how they respond to others sadness you know empathy you know what uh, i just thought of a good example yawning when you know when someone else yawns you feel like yawning too there's something oh, in our yeah. brain called mirror neurons and those mirror neurons they mirror others so people who yawn tend to have more empathy for others right so there's some mm -hmm. signs that people so there's there's natural variations there's many people that are like it's not even their fault that the like okay let's talk about people who, like you said who didn't get the message for example let's say in india the hindus and there's muslims there the hindus mm -hmm. they know about islam they know about Allah, they know about Muhammad, all of them know. All of them know that Muslims worship an invisible God. They think it's an invisible God. Like, mm. Why should they, do you not feel like the fact that they were born into a Hindu family is most likely mean they're going to go to hell? Because 99% of them are going to die as Hindus, right? They won't go to hell because they didn't understand the message. Okay. I don't think any person yeah. understood the message of Islam, the real message of Islam. Okay, mm. not, not Fox News Islam. That's different. Okay, I don't think anyone understood the real message of Islam and rejected it. I never, like me, when I understood the wrong message of Islam, I was definitely that's not the God. That's, there, there's no God. I don't think anyone would do this. You know. Yeah. So how do you explain like suffering in the world, like what? diseases and, for example, like? Let, let me give you an example about diseases. Let's say now there's cancer and like I don't know how many million people are dying. Lots per, of people. Yeah. Year? A couple of million. Let's say hundred years later, down the road, a disease will come that will kill. I don't know. Hundred years later, there will be like 12, 12 billion people. It will kill like six billion people. But we did enough research during the cancer time, like we cured cancer not by then. Mm -hmm. So we did enough research to cure cancer. That these five billion people will be cured by the research that we did. Like, no one will die from the 5 billion people. So we sacrificed, I don't know, a couple of million people to save 5 billion people. Mm -hmm. So you see, there's, a bigger, there's a bigger picture that we don't see. So but isn't that, isn't that just... Stuff that we don't understand. But isn't that still be isn't that us still suffering and going through all of this pain in order to fix a bad situation that we would put in? True, true, true. but that's also a test. Yeah. Like the poor, you know, being poor is a test and being rich is a test, not just being poor is a test. Both of them is, is the test, you know, like some people, when they are poor, they will like, you know, they will start blaspheming and whatever. And someone that's rich, 
uh, we'll start drinking alcohol, we'll start doing poker, we'll start prostitution, you know, it's there. So God tests the poor with what hurts them and tests the rich with what hurts them. Mm -hmm. so you, well, I, I'd say everybody gets tested with sicknesses, right? Like, and not, it's not just, um, it's also like children, like like leukemia, like um, infant leukemia. I, I can't, have been tested them. Yeah, I can't imagine how there's any sort of positive benefit coming out of a child getting leukemia. Right? Mm. I mean, I've seen some videos, there's a, there's a, sk a rare skin disease where um, this, this kid was born with like very, very, like the skin would just fall off and the, the mother had to constantly put band-aids until he died. <sighs> I just can't imagine how, mm -hmm. what's the benefit of like, uh, there's no, there's no reason to do that. Like, but and, and some of you, but it doesn't mean that it's, there's no God. This doesn't prove that there's no God. It, it doesn't, sh it's, it's hard to believe that there's a, uh, a loving God, if He allows such things to happen, when there's there's clearly no benefit, especially for the child. Like you know, the typical example, the good example is 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 the one of the deer in the forest, like burning alive from a from a you know like this thunderstorm or something, and the the forest catches on fire and the deer dies in the forest. There's like literally no benefit ex except the animal suffers right and dies. So that's a kind of example. Another example is how, you know, if God was actually making this world meaningfully and designing designing it, why do animals have to tear each other apart like lions and cheetahs? And 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 for the poor lions, they have no choice. Like it's not like they're doing this for fun. They need to eat, right? So they're like killing and and like parasites that like that go inside of living. You know, it was Darwin. Darwin said that the the parasitic wasp the fact that it lays its eggs inside a living creature and from the inside it like it, it's like a it's like a scary alien movie right like mm. this is it doesn't seem like logical to believe that god did all of this intentionally on top of the fact that you know, when we look at evolution it provides a perfectly coherent explanation for everything that there is no watchmaker it's a blind watchmaker it's it's just natural selection, right? You know what I'm saying? So in, in natural selection... It makes sense even from a religious perspective. What what makes sense? Yes. That's how, how does it make sense? How does it make sense? You, know, you know that God doesn't form stuff by his hand. Mm -hmm. it say be, and it is. Mm -hmm. He says, and everything happens by itself. So it makes it makes complete sense from a religious perspective. I don't know why people don't accept natural selection, because it's like... Oh, like you mean, oh, you mean evolution makes sense from a religious perspective? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and 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 many theists, you know, give them giving them credit, they do accept evolution. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. So, so the problem with evolution, though, is is Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you reconcile Adam and Eve with evolution? I mean, that's a problem because you know there are like some signs in the Quran. But we don't want to misinterpret it. I, I'm against the fact about the Quran is scientific. I'm against it. I'm mm -hmm. definitely against what, it. What do you mean you're against the Quran being scientific? Explain. Like, there are scientific miracles in the Quran. Okay. Like, Quran okay. This way before, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so so there might not be sci Okay, so we agree there's no scientific miracles, but is no. there scientific errors in the Quran? No, no errors. No, neither miracles. It's just like the science that's mentioned in the Quran. It's not contradictory. Personally, I believe if you have any examples, you can show yeah, me. Yeah, like let's talk about Adam and Eve. Yeah, about, about Adam and Eve. Like, there are some signs inside the Quran that says that they were created on earth, they didn't, uh, sorry, they were they evolved, they didn't come down from somewhere, or I don't know, you know. So, so okay, um, but again, you know, science is inconsistent, so I won't. Well, I want. I can't disprove a religion because of an inconsistent theory. Okay. Maybe they will discover something new that will prove everything they said is wrong. It it's quite possible that um, something will come about that would cause all of evolution to be thrown away, but it's it's quite unlikely too because as time goes by with science, what we find is that a previous theories get more and more refined. So Newton's, for example, uh, um, thermodynamics, for example, Newton's 
gravity and all of those laws, they still apply. It's just that at the scale of very small, you know, um, like the quantum level, now those, those rules no longer apply, right? So you need a new set of rules, which is Einstein's theory of relativity mm -hmm. and quantum mechanics, right? But, but at the large scale, you know, gravity still makes perfect sense, right? Every action will have an opposing reaction. All of these, these rules are still true. This, the size of the Earth was calculated to a very high level of precision. I think it was like more than, I forget how long ago, it was many, many years ago, where I believe it was a philosopher that managed to somehow figure it out based on shadows and based on the distances. And mm -hmm. and that was the size of the earth. And even the weight yeah. weight of the earth, it's, we still haven't got any more accurate than like previous calculations. So definitely there's groundbreaking, you know, science that comes about that causes us to throw out everything. But it happens less and less and yeah, less often exactly. as time goes by. There's a chance. There's a chance. So I, I, don't, I, I believe with the, the evolution, even that there are some gaps, I believe in it, like because it makes the most sense currently. You know, but there are some scientific, you know, not scientific, there are some like uh, glitches inside the Quran that refers to it. But the Quran needs some open minded uh, interpretation. It's like someone to explain that's I have an open minded, not just. So, like, like, so here, here's my. Okay, so sorry, were you still going on? I, I cut you off. Uh, yeah, I can just say, give you a small example. Yep. Like, for example, uh, when. when the iron, for example, God said, uh, it came down, you know? But for Adam and Eve, he didn't say the Anzala. He said, Ahbet, Ahbet al-Masr. Gold, Ahbet, not Ahbet al-Masr, he said it for uh, Moses. Mm -hmm. Like, go down to Egypt. And same for Adam and Eve. He said, Ahbet He didn't say Anzala, he didn't say go down. He said, like, go down, but like on earth, not go down from up. Why is that significant? I don't quite understand. Because in, there's there's examples in the Quran. You know, so I, it comes from. Uh, it's not from Earth, right? You know that. Oh, okay. Yeah, the problem. Okay, so the the iron the claim words that are used is different. Yeah. So the iron claim, just as a scientific miracle. But it's not didn't a miracle. You... It's mentioned by the Egyptians one thousand four hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to ask you. Didn't you just say it's no, not no, a miracle? I know that. I know that. I have I but know. not just that. Like. It's not just iron; it's all the heavy metals, right? It's also yeah, you know what I mean, like exactly. it's also platinum. But people focus on iron as if it's like, but it's all it's all of them, right? It would be more accurate. Yeah, exactly. Just like that, yeah. So okay, so going back to evolution, um, I just want there, there are some references codes, but we need some open-minded uh, professor. So okay, here we go. So you were saying there's a possibility. I, I just remembered my point. <laughs> you were saying there's a possibility that all of science, or let's say all of evolution specifically, a, a Darwinian natural selection will be thrown out and come up with a better theory. Now, what no, I wanted no, to ask no, was, uh, apes. I think. Sorry. Apes, like from uh, Homo sapiens, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, let's say, I'm just saying theoretically it's possible, but what I would say is we should look at um, Occam's razor. Occam's razor would say that, you know, when you have... Oh, yeah, the simplest explanation, yeah. Yeah, like, look, look for the one that makes the most sense. So, in this case, the one that makes the most sense is Muhammad was, Prophet Muhammad was just making it up as he went along. Like, why, why you wouldn't you believe that? that? Because it makes sense that he's taking the story of Adam and Eve from the Bible, that, you know, Adam and Eve, they came down, they were tricked by shaitan, they sinned and then Allah forgave them. Like, it's just a story. It doesn't have anything to do with the reality no, of the evolution. Bible is a snake, it was a snake. A talking snake. Yeah, okay. The Quran has talking ants, the Bible has talking yeah, snakes. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Talk my point ants, communicating ants. ants. My, my, point, my point isn't that. Mm. My point is that it's, it's more likely that Muhammad just made it up. What makes you believe, like, what's so special about this book? And, and especially specifically in this case of evolution where we just 150 years ago came up with this like astounding insight about the 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 you know the connectedness of all life and how you know how it came about and how we see you know like these trees of life where we have like you know related animals and how we we came from apes we have and even you know we have 99 point whatever two percent of the same dna as like chimps, right? So we, we can have the, we can see all of these connections and we can see that 
where the chromosomes have split and we can go back and we can find where genetic Eve existed and genetic Adam, you know, a common uh, father and a common mother, for example. Um, and they never lived at the same time, which is kind of confusing. But, but if you study evolution, that's explained. So we, we know all of this now, but back then they thought, you know, what makes sense, the most sense, you know, you have a mom, I have a mom, you have a dad, I have a dad. Of course, there must have been a first mom and dad. Whereas with evolution, it says there was no first humans. It was a gradual refinement of, of animals that went from, you know, from a single cell to like, you know, complicated, whatever. So isn't it more likely that Muhammad just made it up? Like, like you can look for these little hints here and there that says, oh, he wasn't Allah, didn't send down Adam and Eve. They were there before. But it's not, it's not clearly stated that, you know, we are the ones who shaped you from previous forms and you know like it would have been very easy for allah to to put that fact in the quran without like making the previous generations freak out and say oh my god this is all made up because at the same time he did do that like allah or actually what i believe muhammad did say a bunch of stuff to the to the people of his time that made him like laughed at for example saying i went to all the way to um jerusalem in one night and then i came back and then i, I went all the way up to heaven right? right it makes sense it, from quantum mechanics side it makes sense like, like uh, uh, okay or not i explained it already do you remember in the comments okay so i i briefly so go ahead so let's let's talk about that again we'll get back to it but let's finish the evolution thing first. so the evolution so the evolution point i'm trying to make is mm. that there's no excuse for Allah to not just say things for what they actually are. Not just there's no scientific miracles in the Quran. I think there's like, there's a lot of red flags. Red flags in the sense of Muhammad saying things exactly as they were understood at that time. There's no, there's no evidence of a, a greater being that was involved in the authorship of the Quran. Okay. So we should understand that the Quran is not mentioned only, it's not meant only for us. Mm -hmm. no, it's, not, it's not meant for the 21st century or mm -hmm. 30th century. It's meant from the 7th century people till the universe doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But humanity extincts. So then that makes my argument even stronger because it's only been a thousand years or so, a thousand years plus minus 400, where it wouldn't make sense about evolution. But now for the rest of existence of humanity, for the next 10,000 years, we are scientifically literate, which makes even more sense that the Quran should be in line. Because what's happening now is Allah has given us a message which is causing a lot of doubt. Now, one thing I want to say about evolution, I, I have it on my blog. Uh, I just want to share my screen here. Where Allah actually says, um, you know, like, you know, the example of Jesus to Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust. He said to him, be and he was, right? And in, and in, the, in the Surah Nisa, it says, O oh, mankind, fear the Lord, created you from one soul and created from its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. So it's talking about common ancestry. Common okay. ancestry is a big problem for Islam because, you know, I, I just want to quote what Yasir Qadi said. Sheikh Yasir Qadi, and I know some people say they don't like him, but, but the fact is that he was so honest here, it was shocking to me. It was like shockingly, like I just couldn't believe he said that. He actually said there's no logical way for a Muslim to contradict this entire account A to Z, verse by verse, hadith by hadith, except by claiming that the whole story is a fable, it's allegorical and not meant to be understood at face value. Now, this is a part I couldn't believe he said. Such a claim might actually make more sense logically, but leads to disastrous and blasphemous implications about Allah and his truth, his truthfulness and the function of the Prophet and the role of the Quran. So this is in a video that he said where he was talking about evolution. It was a debate. And he basically, at, at the end of it, he was just throwing his hands up and saying, I have to say Allah knows best because if we accept it at face value, it's very problematic. Like it's talking about common ancestry. It's talking about he was made fully formed, be as it is, be as it be and it is. So but how do you Jesus like that? But Jesus wasn't. He didn't come straight to the earth. He came by. Uh, uh, Je Jesus is another funny example because Jesus has you know if he's a man he needs to have a the male chromosome which again would have to. So with all of these stories, you know, that's the definition of a miracle. Yes, it's something that's against the law. True. If it's something that we can do it. Then it's not a miracle. It's just like a normal event. Yeah, <laughs> that is that's a definition. That is true. That is true. So, yeah. you know, when it, again, when it comes back to, like, 
I, I'm just, I just left wondering, like, doesn't it make more sense that Muhammad just made it up? Because well, we shouldn't just say, should, we should have evidence that support it. No, because that's a default position. The burden of proof is on the p person that's bringing forth the claim that the Quran is from God. Because the default position is he made it up. Like, I can come up with a book and say I, it's from God. Mm. And you, okay. you wouldn't tell me, like, oh, no, no you have to prove, I, you have to prove it's not from God. No, no. it's true. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So there are, there are like uh, two chances or two arguments for, for Muhammad, okay? Yeah. So it's either he was a liar and yeah. he wanted something out of it or he was delusional. He was like hallucinating or getting crazy or whatever, okay? So if he was a liar, he wants something out of it. Maybe he wanted kingdom, maybe he wanted money, maybe he wanted women, maybe he wanted, I don't know, something else, like whatever. But at a point of his life, you know the story, you know the story of Prophet Muhammad, right? Yes. Go ahead, you can share it again. Sun and the moon, right? I don't really know. The so, so basically, basically, they offered him early on in his early on in his prophetic career. They went to his uncle and they told him to tell him to stop. He, uncle went to him and tell him to stop. He said, "No, I'm not going to stop." So then they told either his uncle or they told him, "You know, we'll give you women and we'll give you power and we'll make you the okay. king of Arabia." And then he said, "If you gave me the sun and you gave me the moon, I would not stop this message." Something like so that. So he was right? delusional. So, so if you ask me. Um, was Muhammad a liar or did he make it up? I actually have a video on this called The Science of Prophethood where I do believe there's a lot of signs that he was actually, he may have had temporal lobe epilepsy. So, yeah, like, epilepsy, yeah, yeah, I know that he used to hear bells and whatever. I'm sorry? But one thing, when he used to receive revelation, the, the Sahaba, they used to say he used to get heavy. He's really heavy. Mm -hmm. Epilepsy. Do that. It doesn't become heavy from epilepsy. Yeah, yeah. So the hadith has a lot of legendary information about him. It also true, says true. he slept with all of his wives in one night. It says okay, that doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things we're not totally sure about. But true. but so so that the reason that this makes the, the reason why this is a, a good explanation for what happened is because like well, first of all, it, it's being charitable to him. Like he especially in the beginning when he came home if the story is true he came home to khadija and he says i'm possessed or i saw i don't know what happened to me and she mm -hmm. said no no she actually told him that you're a prophet and then she took him to waraka who know. said you're a prophet no because he said he said he basically was scared that i'm possessed he doesn't know what was going he on he doesn't know what was going on and she told him you spoke to an angel let's go find out from my uncle will uh, so basically the story waraka bin nawfal even said, yes, you're a prophet of God and I wish I can live until the day they will kick you out and they will tell you. And then he said, they're going to kick me out. And he's like, yeah, all the prophets before you, they kicked them out. Now, I don't know if the story is true or not. We can take for the grain of salt. But the, but according to the, the early Sirah, he even tried to kill himself, right? Like he went yeah, up to true. the heaven. He did not kill himself. He was like hallucinating. He was like, what's happening? I'm so, getting kicked. Yeah. So, 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 so this is kind of like if he was, oh, and the other thing too is people that do extreme meditation they can it can bring about a type of temporary psych, psychosis i actually talked about it in, in my video the science of prophethood um right at the beginning of the video we, i have uh, muhammad gilan he's a he's a student of neuroscience uh, dr muhammad gilan and he says in his lab you have scientists that are like he said if you don't have a good iman you will lose your faith because they talk yeah. about yeah, they basically say that what the prophets experience can perfectly be explained by temporal lobe yeah. epilepsy, by mm -hmm. a certain and and you have Dr. Ramachandran who's actually done a lot of research, and I actually have a sample of a this one guy who was he thought he was talking to God, and it turns out he had temporal lobe epilepsy that it it caused his caused his brain to believe he was talking to God. So there's a there's a perfectly naturalistic explanation for what Muhammad went through, but but I do believe. As time went by, he started to get more and more benefits from it, and it started to become like a prophetic career for him. Like he he on because on demand, he started getting revelations saying you can marry Zainab, you can have as many wives as you want. That we were gonna do this. Like it it seems like he was benefiting. You know, oh you people that come to my house, don't stay at his house too long because it bothers him. You know, he wants and he wanted to sleep with his wife. So it it just seems all too convenient that things started to. Like Allah became like his personal genie later on. In the beginning, 
you know, maybe he was experiencing some, you know, sort of, because today, if somebody said that they're having these sort of experiences, we would, we would take them to the doctor and we would look and we get them antipsychotic drugs. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they would usually what happens, uh, the hallucinations go away. Sometimes, sometimes they don't go away, but someone who has schizophrenia, they will see things around them. They will hear people talking to them and they don't, and nobody else will hear it. Like I have a friend of mine that he actually told me that he was in studying in university and he heard someone shouting at him, Hey, you, what are you doing? And he was like, what? he's like, shut up. I'm doing my work. And then he went back to his work. And the next day it happened to him in the car while he was driving with his dad. And he's like, okay, now I know something's going on. Like, it's I mean, hallucination. I'm, yeah, it must be a hallucination because I'm in the car. There's nobody here and I'm hearing people talking to me. And he knew his family had a, you know, mental illness in the family. So his mother had a schizophrenia as well. So, I mean, he, he was able to figure it out and he took drugs. Hallucination is like something that is impossible to be true. Like whatever he says is wrong. Doesn't make sense, right? Or if he- well, he's, a he's, a, he's a perfectly- well, but but he's a perfectly functioning individual. He's a successful sure. software developer. He's a you know he has a, he's in his relationship. Um, you know he has all these things going good for him in his life. But the one thing is, at that one time in his life when he was very stressed out, it was stress that actually brought it out in his case. It, he started to hear things. He didn't see anything, but he heard things. So we don't know. Like at Muhammad's time, like maybe he experienced a sort of. But do you know how we know if he's really a prophet or not? Okay. Go ahead. How do we know? Prophecies and that didn't come true, even at like the universe ended and didn't come true, then he's a wrong prophet. Okay. For example, like we're we're we're, bare, we're witnessing it with our own eyes. Like he said, the barefoot Arab, yeah, will build high buildings, and now go like just ask him where's the tallest building? Yeah, and the, the Arabs, <laughs> the, 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 Dubai. You know, like, if, if you go Burj to his Khalifa. time, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to his time. Arabs were like, they didn't even know what's like uh, a brick. They didn't even know what's that. <laughs> so I'm not joking. Literally, yeah, yeah. they used to be barefoot. It they was mud, to... mud houses, right? Yeah, mud houses, for example. They didn't even used to know what's a brick. The Persians and the, the Romans were the ones with the, you know, with the... With, uh, with the civilization, right? Sorry? But isn't it the case, I'm saying, no, I'm saying the, the Romans and the Persians were the ones with the civilization, not the, the Arab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's one. There's also a lot of other stuff like how the how the universe will end. Mm -hmm. and how will it end? And now science is confirming that. It's saying that's completely true. So like, I I missed that. I was talking over you. What what is it? What did he say about the universe ending? He said some prophecies how the universe will end. Can you can you explain? Can you sh um, say them? Uh, I don't know. Like I talk about the sun the sun rising from the east. For example. I'm sorry? For example, for example, that, that, that does make sense in a way. Oh, yeah. Oh, for example, you mean the one I just said? Yeah. Yeah, okay. because the earth, the earth will, like, so, the, it will become motionless. So I actually think that Muhammad may have, well, again, we don't know, but there's some signs in the hadith that talk about the day of judgment coming during his life. I mean, I could be wrong about this, but I remember one hadith saying that. Nobody is going to be alive a hundred years after this time, except you know he will. I don't know something like that. There's some sort of saying like, "Do you have you heard this before?" Okay, there's another. There's a okay. So, so remember, there's all complications because so so ba so basically, the, the, what it seemed like Muhammad was saying was that him and the Day of Judgment, like he is the last major. He is the the beginning of the major sign. Oh, yeah, 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 very close. But it's. I mean, it's been like two thousand. You know, within 2018, it's been 1400 years. There's no day of judgment coming. The the Christians if thought, you know, 2000 it, years now, the Christians are waiting for. If you compare it to how old is the universe, mm -hmm. 40, like almost 14 billion years, mm -hmm. what is 2000 years compared to, to but, 14 so, so, so God created, like the universe. God created the universe 14 billion years ago. And then in the last 2000 years, he created humans and now he's going to create the day of judgment. Like, no, no, like, I don't know, 200, 100 something. So, so the universe has been around for a very long time, mm. and the universe is going to be around for a very long time. I have no doubt there's no day of judgment coming, no Christian day of judgment, there's no Mahdi coming. 
Isa <laughs> is not going to come back, and uh, Dajjal with the one eye is not going to come. There's going to be no. There's going to be no bow and arrow fighting. One of my friends told me that. I don't believe in this thing. So <laughs> okay, okay. So I don't, I don't think there's any idea of judgment. It's just a fear tactic, right? It's just Muhammad trying to scare his uh, companions into believing in him. Mm. Right, like so. The 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 the. But yet, I didn't see any evidence that proved that he's not a prophet. The prophet. Okay, so the prophethood, the the prophecy of the tall buildings. Yeah. The funny thing about that is they're actually Muslims doing it. So, like a Muslim, Muslims it's sometimes. Would, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like Muslims can see the prophecy. Like I I remember there was a prophecy about, uh, the 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 bangles of Kisra, right? Okay. Where where Omar is like. I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to take those bangles and I'm going to put them on your hands and I'm, I'm going to complete that prophecy. So so some of the Muslims were actually motivated to make it happen. It doesn't mm. make it... It's, it's It could be amazing, like, in some sense. But well, wait, that's, that's like... But you know, the thing that's like is, one of the hundred prophecies. So, so the, the whole problem to me with prophecies is it's, it's such a strange thing in the first place that you make a religion that people have to have faith to believe in it and then you give these sort of like miracles to like make people happy and to make them believe. But in the first place, like, what's the point of that? Like, why would you bring Jesus? He's healing people and, you know, all these crazy things are happening. Yet at the same time, everybody that comes after Jesus, they just have to believe that it happened. Like, that's not even fair. Like, I know it doesn't make any sense, but, you know, it doesn't make any sense from our perspective. Maybe yes. least, and we don't know. It doesn't make sense. So why hold on to a faith that that puts all of these costs on you to believe, like to pray, or even not even to pray, just to what, like, like, so many things, like, like you know, will you get married to or not get married to? Like, non-Muslim women cannot be with Muslim men. Um, sorry, non-Muslim women. Like my wife, <laughs> she's supposed she's not allowed to be with me if she's Muslim because. <laughs> Because it's like I'm a kafir, like I'm an apostate, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> like my, it, like the cost of religion is 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 very heavy, especially when it comes to Islam and especially Orthodox Islam. So, like, what's the point of holding on to this? Just is it just but like I'm telling you, because there's a lot of evidence. You're you're looking at the negative. Yes. But at the positive. Okay, so let's talk about positives then. L let me give you like another prophecy. For example, what you're wearing now on your ears mm -hmm. is. The prophet said, one day, the, the people will have musical instruments on their ears. No? Here, yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard this before. And once he said, Yusuf, right? Yeah. I don't remember who. I just... I don't so, remember. So, so the thing, a thing about these, like... That's one. There's other one also that says, metal will start talking. Mm -hmm. It's scary. But it, there's also, like... Like there's also like hilarious ones too. Like like, okay. So let's go back to the first example you gave about the naked, barefooted Bedouin will be building, will be competing to make tall buildings. The problem with these prophecies is unless the specific and like quantifiable, like open-ended prophecies are not valuable because they they can be used like a hundred times. Like I could say, oh, that's that's the prophecy, or that's the prophecy. Like it's not like. In the year fourteen hundred and fifty-two, this will happen, and no one knows about. It. Like it's it's not like it's not clear and specific. It's always like we some vague. It's, like, you know, it's always vague, like always vague type of things that that's one, how it is. Like, one day, one, it. and if I was a prophet, I would make up a bunch of stuff like that, and and someone would eventually would say, "Hey, this one is correct," and he got this one correct, and he got this one correct, but like everything else he said was wrong, right? Like what? Well, I gave the example of like the Quran talking about Adam and Eve. That seems to be a problem. Let's, Other than this, you let's know, talk this about... is like a problematic. I agree, but we need someone that has an open mind to to explain it. Because, for example, in like uh, chapter two, verse thirty, yeah, God says that there was a nation before humans that didn't used to worship Him and they used to kill each other, mm -hmm. which are Homo sapiens. Before they used to interpret it as jinns because they don't know who else is before humans. Yep. So you just need gin. But now we can say that it's Homo sapiens because we have more knowledge. Sorry, can you can you say that one more time? I didn't totally understand that. Um, in chapter two, yep. verse three, God says that there was a nation, not a nation, but like a cow, a group of people, yeah. a group of, I don't know, a group 
it didn't specify what, just that a group was before humans that used to kill each other and shed the blood in the earth. Yeah. And they didn't use to worship God. So you're saying Neanderthal they, they, didn't? Before, before we discovered like evolution? Yeah. As, as, until now, they... they, they the other thing is ne Neanderthal. I, I interpret it, to be, to be honest, as personally, I interpret it as homo sapiens. Because oh, homo sapiens. We homo are homo sapiens. Because they used to kill each other and, you know... But we are homo sapiens. Oh, wait, sorry. You mean Neanderthals? Yeah. I don't but know. But why would Neanderthals not worship God? They would do the because same thing. Because they don't have intellect as much as us. They were like half animals, half humans, you know, more or less. Um, hmm. Maybe not them. Maybe the one before them, you know. E there, are some, there are some, like, references to, to, to evolution in the Quran. But like I said, we need someone that has open mind. But but why does God misleading everybody to make it seem like he's talking about a fairy tale of Adam and Eve, first mommy and first daddy? Let's say, let's daddy. say the 7th century. If I told you, suppose, put yourself in the shoes of a 7th century person. If I told you you're an ape, what would you do? You would kill me, definitely. <laughs> but, didn't, but didn't he do that? Muhammad said to them, I went to Jerusalem in one night. And they were laughing their ass off. <laughs> yeah, true. So he, he, he could, now it makes sense if you, if, you do, if you do some studies on it from a quantum physics perspective. It makes complete sense. I you know? I don't understand enough of quantum physics to understand how you can go to Jerusalem in one night. How does that work? He explained the animal or the thing that Burak. he explained it as an animal. He didn't, yes. Like, it's slightly it's, bigger than a, uh, a donkey, but smaller than a horse. Yeah, he didn't know to explain it, but he, he said Burak. Mm -hmm. Burak comes from the word Bark, right? Which means lightning in Arabic, Bark. Mm -hmm. and you know, like uh, the lightning bolt, it has an energy of uh, 1 to 19 billion uh, joules. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So there's a distance between Jerusalem and Mecca. It's like 100, uh, sorry, 1,486 kilometers. And the speed that he traveled with, which is the Burak, or Bark, is uh, 97,536 kilometers per second, the velocity. Right? So, so looking at the so hadith, he, he covered the distance between here and there in 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, but why does the hadith say it's bigger than a donkey and smaller than a mule? The speed of light, like a light, he was traveling on a lightning? On li in... I don't know, possibly it's, we don't know. No, no, possibly it's an animal that travels in the same speed of light. So how, do, how, how, do, light you, how do you explain the Isra? Uh, well, Mirage, I mean, the Mirage, where he's going up from the different seven heavens and he's meeting the different prophets. Notice how he explained it, exactly. Notice how he explained it. He explained it as a parallel universe. You know, theoretically, a parallel universe is logical. But, you know, applicably, we can't. It's impossible. We need so much energy. You know? But, but I feel God, like... If God is true, for a second, let's take a sake for argument that God is true. He created the whole universe. Don't you think that he can create an animal or a something or whatever that can travel with such speed? like of course like this you know but yeah it's like, I, I agree with you, it's yeah. explainable and like you notice what he said he said my bed was uh was still warm time stopped for him so but why do we need why do you need quantum mechanics to explain it when you already said it's a miracle like 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 for example you know jesus being born without a male father why do you need quantum mechanics to explain it? Allah just broke the laws of the universe. He went even faster than the speed of light. He doesn't need to, you don't need to calculate the distance and say it's this much and Burak means lightning. I'm just explaining and... it to you. So no, but why, but why do you, you have enough energy? Why do you but need to justify it? Enough energy is impossible. But, but what's the point of justifying it when you, you already said that God can do whatever he wants? Kun fi akun. Yeah, exactly. But you know something, I should just prefer to explain it to you. If you don't want, no problem. No, <laughs> but it just... It's redundant. It's, the explanation is not needed because we have already established that Allah does as He wills, right? So, mm. so, so here's the thing: like the Hadith says, it's an <laughs> animal bigger than a donkey and smaller than a mule. Now, mm. my point is, why, why go through all the difficulty to try to make sense of it when it probably just never happened? Like, it's like. You're putting so much effort into making sense of it using quantum. How do you know it never happened? How, how do you know? Because I mean, it most likely never happened. Nobody, there's no evidence for it. 
course there's no evidence for it. If, if there is evidence for it, then it didn't happen. So why why do we... Because you travel at such a speed that your eye can't see it. Okay, so, so why, why do we... It doesn't make sense. So, but so... That's, exactly, that's the evidence for it, but it's explainable by quantum physics. If it's not explainable by quantum physics, then there's no evidence. That's that's the evidence that we can explain it. So, uh, so this is the same problem you have when you talk to a Christian and they say, I believe Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They say, for example, when it comes to Noah's Ark, you know, all of the animals were put on the ark. And then you mm -hmm. ask them, well, why didn't the lions eat the, the deer? Oh, yeah. God made him vegetarian. I, I, have you ever heard this before? <laughs> <laughs> so God made him vegetarian. And then, but what about the, all the different species of, of, yeah. And what about, yeah. What about kangaroo? What about the ants? Like, yeah, yeah. what about like the, the millions of species of bugs? Yeah, what 40, about the ants. Thousand, you know. What about the fish? What about the freshwater fish? They all would have died. Like, what mm -hmm. about the fact that in order for the, the, the ark to go on Mount Sina, the amount of water that had to exist would be more than all the water that's existing on the earth. There's no, there's not even that much water on the earth for the you world. No, the Quran doesn't say, it just says for the nation of Noah, to be fair to the Quran, it says for the nation of Noah. It didn't oh. say Lil Alameen for the world. It just said for the nation of Noah. But, it's but, okay, so, you know, but, remove the mistake out of the Bible. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the Bible. Going on. So, so, but then if that's the case, if that's the case, why didn't why? you go to another city? I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, that's kind of funny. All the disbelievers <laughs> could just travel to next town down the street and they'll be like, yeah, no flood, no problem. But the problem is that in the Quran, Noah makes dua and he says, don't leave a single kafir alive on the earth. <laughs> Like, Ya Allah, destroy the inhabitants of the earth. Right? Which verse like, is that? Um, I will find it right now. Noah, disbeliever. Hold on. I have it. I actually have it in my video um, about Noah. Right? One second. Because the Quran also says that the, 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 the water went up like mountains. Right? So unless you're going to say that's a sort of allegory, uh, whatever. Right? Um, oh, here I found it. So, oh my lord, I can see, I can see your screen. You can see it? No. Oh, sorry, it's cut off. Hold on. One second. Let me fix it. One second. Add source. Hold on. Where is it? Okay. Can you see now? Yeah. So, so this kind of contradicts the idea of <sighs> that it was a local flood because I really don't think it's a local flood. I, I think it was um, a global flood, right? Like I, I know it makes to make sense of the fact that there's no scientific evidence for a global flood. People like to say that, and to make sense of all of the contradictions that we have with with the global flood, you know, idea. Um, People like to say it's a local flood, but then it, it contradicts the the wall. The wall story is a contradiction. Yeah, then. Why does he need? To, God. But why does he need to take all the animals then? Like he doesn't even need to take animals if it's just a local flood. Like why does he need to take two of every single animal? You know what I mean? It's not in the Quran to take every single animal in the world. No, it doesn't it's in the Quran. Um, I, that's in the Bible. No, it's in the Quran as well. Here, let me find it for every you. Every single yeah. animal in the world. It is. Yeah, but it doesn't say from everything. It just said a pair of, of whatever is available. <laughs> why, why does it say that? Exactly, you know, we don't want to translate it as we understand it. It's ambiguous enough. He didn't say every single animal from the whole world. It just said a pair. But but we know the story from the Bible. It's using the same flawed, made up fable, mm. right? It's just to me. To me, it just makes more sense. It's made up, like 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 one after another. One after another, it's like these stories. They they lead us to to believe that it's just made it up, right? I I don't see how any of this makes sense. 
you see you're, you're translating it as you understand it. You're translating the Quran as a subjective book. It's an objective book, it's not a subjective book. So it's like you should understand it how it's written, not how you how you want to understand it. You see what you're doing? You're so, forcing yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm straw manning the Quran, you're saying. Right? You're saying I'm straw manning the Quran. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is to be honest. I'm I'm doing the same thing that like if you read any tafsir, especially in the first 500 years before they discovered that global flood makes no sense, they would have said the same thing. Like read Ibn Kathir. I bet you any money if you look up Ibn Kathir right now, right? Like if you go to QuranX.com and you know, it's even better for you than me because you can actually read Arabic and I'm stuck to like the translation of Ibn Kathir, right? But, but if you go there and you look at, for example, let me see tafsir and you, you read the tafsir, I, I bet you any money it'll say like the same thing, right? It'll, it'll say the exact same thing that I said, that you're taking, look, that everybody's gonna be killed and we're taking, you know, you know it's like, why, why did he t ask him to take two of each animal, right? Like it, it's all in there. And why, why, you're right that I'm, I'm, I'm giving it like a certain meaning. But you know that Noah, we should yeah. know that Noah was sent only to a nation of people, right? Mm -hmm. Now he wasn't sent to the whole earth. Yeah. So why should God destroy the whole earth just because of Noah? It doesn't add up. It, it doesn't add up anyways. It never added up. Why would he destroy everybody after giving them free will and letting them, like, they don't get a full lifetime? And, and not only that, how long did Noah live, according to a Quran? I don't know, like 150 years, something like that. It doesn't make, up. It doesn't make sense. But we can't disprove it, neither can we prove it. Wait, hold on a second. You're saying you believe he lived a thousand years? No, I don't. Doesn't mean I don't believe. It. I I leave it aside, you know. Well, like, it says it says right there he lived. I can't prove that I'm wrong. You can prove this is wrong. It says clearly he lived a thousand years. Human beings, Neanderthal or non-Neanderthal or Homo sapien, we don't live a thousand years. The only way that we will ever live a thousand years is if we become gods on Earth, which is what might happen. But how soon. can we know that God didn't make him alone live that long? Again, Occam's razor. You can say, well, how don't we know? How don't we know? How don't... Like, you're putting all of this, like, logic and on one side, and you're putting all of these assumptions on the side of the Quran. In order to hold your faith, you have a thousand assumptions that you're making. Whereas on the other side, you just have the Quran, and it's wrong. But there's nothing scientific yet that can disprove it. You know what I mean? You didn't mention anything scientific. Can you mention just one thing at least? Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> I think it's okay. It's possible they lived one man that lived a thousand years, but I don't see how that's. It's I don't see this. It's possible, or maybe he just made it up. What, what's what would you like? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the only reason you even believe this in the first place is because you believe it from God, otherwise, you wouldn't believe any of this. You'd be like, This is nonsense. If I told you. I, if I told you the religion of Zenu, where there was a there was a man who lived two thousand years and he was giving out you know chocolates on the earth, and one day the god of you know like I can make such a silly story and no one would believe it. Like, uh, Zakir Naik says, eighty percent of the Quran is <laughs> Zakir Naik. Oh no, blasphemy! That's against my religion. Thou shalt never <laughs> mention Zakir Naik on my channel. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Um. Uh, to be honest, I hate that he always mentions the Quran with science. Like, that's so wrong. That's, yeah. so wrong. that's like a whole mess. But 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 the thing but is I, that like, the, if eighty percent of the Quran is right, yeah, and the percent is ambiguous, not wrong, mm -hmm. not right. That doesn't mean that it's wrong because of this twenty ambiguous person. Yeah, but it's it's wrong though. How how come you know? Can we prove it? We well, can. well. Uh, well, I, I gave a bunch of examples, but, but the thing is, like all of these, so even if you didn't know for sure, why would you want to, t like, why would you even bother with all of these assumptions when there's like, it's more likely, like, do you agree what it's more likely? Like, what? like, what, like you, you have to stack up all these assumptions versus a straightforward, like, explanation. It's almost like a conspiracy theory when you tell someone, you know, like, but how, like, someone comes to you with a conspiracy 
And then they're like, yeah, but what about this? And they're like, oh, no, 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 this and this and this. And vaccines are, are dangerous because the government's trying to get us and they want to reduce the population and they want to do this. And, and they have like a thousand assumptions versus a just straightforward like explanation that like, you know, vaccines are safe and healthy. It's the same type of idea with religions. You have to make a no, thousand you assumptions. You didn't give me any evidence that would prove like, you know, Finisher, it's like finishes the crown off. Finisher, do, do, do. yeah, exactly. Like finish the crown off. I, I, I think there's enough. Okay, so one of the things which I I mentioned to you online, which we never we kind of discussed it, but um, you seem to have a disagreement with me on that, which was um, mm. this this heavens and earth being joined. Let's let's talk about that. You mm. said this is not a problem. You want to explain that to me, or should I explain my position first? You think that, yeah, no, no, explain. You think that they, so, they, they were so, at the same time? So the problem I have with the Quran is mm. it's it's trying to say that the heavens and the earth were a joined entity. We separated mm. them and made from water every living thing. When, then will they not believe? So okay. what is the Sama? The Sama is defined in the Quran in another verse that it has the, um, right, the Kawakib, the stars. Sama is anything in Arabic? Anything that's above you. Okay, so in the Quran, though, it says we we beautified the nearest sama with stars. Mm. So the nearest sama has stars in it, right? Mm. So we can notice uh, in the chapter one, mm -hmm. chapter twenty-one, verse thirty. Look what yep. look what they said. They didn't say a sama. They said a sama what? Yes, a sama, which is heaven, is infinite. It's the opposite of English. A sama what is limited. It's like the opposite of English, you know. A sama is whatever above you. So, what is sama sama? What what is that? Limited. What does that mean? Hmm? What is the sab sama sama? What the seven heavens? So, just to just to explain to everybody, when we say seven heavens here, we don't we're not talking about jannah. We're not talking about paradise. We're talking about heavens as as um Noel said. It's what's above you. So the sky, basically space, space or whatever. Right? So yeah. what is this? What is the seven heavens? What does that mean to you? Well, it could, it could have a couple of meanings at the same time. We don't know. That's why. But like, remember when I explained to you the seven layers of, of Earth, the ozone, the troposphere, stratosphere, ozone. Yes, ozone layer, yes, 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 yes. Atmosphere, thermosphere, you know? And it could mean also the space. I, I explained to you before that, like the Oort cloud, the local, uh, local interstellar, the Milky Way galaxy, and then you have the local group of galaxies, the Virgo supercluster. So, oh. uh, Lineakia supercluster. So, this is my universe. This was my point. My point was five that main. You see, it's five not, main. It's arbitrary. You can you can group the number of layers of atmosphere however you want. You can put five. You can put seven. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just human beings making this up, right? Like how mm. we want to specify. And second of all, if you say levels of atmosphere, you have a big problem with the mirage because you don't have like prophets at each level of atmosphere. That doesn't make any sense. So let's let's go back. Let's go back one step. I want to go back to one step. Step one. Mm. So seven heavens. What did that mean to the people, the pre-Islamic Arabs? What did that mean? The Jahili Arabs? Yeah, I think they thought that was like, you know, like sun, moon. I don't know how they thought about it. Okay. But like... So so it that... Like that and it could be interpreted like now. That's what I mean. That's the ambiguity in the Quran. That it could oh. be interpreted in both ways because it's meant for both nations. We should have an open mind. We shouldn't say it means that, you know, it means seven heavens back then, how they thought about it. Not now. It's, it's done. That's it. So so the, the thing is, it had a certain meaning to the Islam, pre Islamic Arabs, which was basically Plato's seven spheres, right? So, yeah. like you said, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. Uh, Good. Basically, Good. Yeah. So, so, and the, and the moon as well. So this idea of seven spheres, right? Seven, seven heavens is something that existed before Islam. Now the Quran comes, Muhammad is coming and he's using the same language. He's saying seven heavens. Nobody is saying, hold on. What do you mean by that? The actually, and neither does he actually redefine what he means by seven heavens. He doesn't say like, actually, I don't mean the seven heavens that you guys believe in. I mean a different seven heavens. He's Suppose he's all them. They would say he's like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's using the same language 
that people believed in, which is this ancient idea of cosmology of seven spheres. Which right? happens to be true also now. It's not true. It's not true at all. There's no seven heavens. These are planets orbiting around the sun. It has not, no, no, it's no, not I'm true not at all. This. I'm not talking about these seven heavens. I'm talking seven heavens in general, like seven layers. Or seven. You know, some people... No, but, this, but, the, but the Quran says... Sorry? No, but you can't say it means seven sky. You can't say it means a stratosphere and a toposphere. Because it's a possibility. No, no, no. no it's not a possibility. Not. It is not a possibility at all because of 37.6 right here. This clearly says the lowest heaven, right, hmm. has been adorned with stars. It cannot be the seven layers of atmosphere. It cannot because the lowest one has stars in it. And how far is the closest star? How close is the closest star, I should say? Yeah, yeah. It's but like that's why millions. I gave you a second example, which means the Oort cloud. Okay, but but the Milky Way galaxy, or it could mean so. So uh, no, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, it's ambiguous. We don't know what it it's is. It's not ambiguous. It's well <laughs> defined by the pre-Islamic Arabs, and the Quran uses the same language. It continues the same language that they they believed in, and the same kind of belief. And and okay, I'll give you another example. Does is it anywhere in the Quran like? The Quran is also a book that 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 describes the world in a geo in a geocentric model, right? It's um, it's describing the earth and the universe in in a way that the ancient people believed. Where the the and you like you have seen my blog, so you know this, I right? Like, it, yeah, I've seen it. I describe it in an ambiguous way that could it could it could relate to both. That's what we should understand, you know? Okay, but no, no, it's ambiguous, but it's also it's also hinting at the meaning when it talks about day and night, right? And sun and moon. Okay. So like, again, we have two possibilities. Well, what's wrong with this verse? I don't see. Actually, I see something that's scientific inside it. it it's, it's coarse, you know? I see, I see it's it. saying, it's, okay. no, it's talking about, the problem is, it seems that the, the, the writer of the Quran did not realize the sun and moon do not go around the earth and they do not chase each other. No. They're not even on the same path, like not even close. Like they're not, there's no connection between the sun and the moon. The sun and moon, when the Quran talks about them, like, like, you know, banging into each other on the day of judgment, all of these things show us, these are all red flags that Muhammad was making up stuff based on what he understood of cosmology, right? It's not. It's not at all That's like we understood, as you're saying. Yeah. Why didn't he say straight to the point? If that's what he understood, why didn't he say straight to the point? The moon and the sun go around the earth. Why didn't he just say? He just said they run around. They run in its course. He didn't say around the earth in its course. He didn't specify. So he left it ambiguous enough to believe either around its earth or around the galaxy and the moon around the uh, around and, and the earth. Here's another example of. Of him mm. talking, only talking about the sun and the moon, and the sun cannot catch the moon, and Which the night, uh, like 36, 38, 39, and 40. First, he talks about the sun running towards a stopping point. How do you understand that? That is what, true. What do you, what do you, what does that mean? A specific time, a specific point. The sun, the, what is that stopping point? What does that mean? It means like, uh, in Arabic, it's saying the mustakarran laham. It means a specific time. Even science confirms that, like five billion five billion years later, there won't be a sun anymore. You know. Okay. Okay. So Fair enough. That's it's completely logical. Okay. I'm telling you, if you look at it from a criticizing point, but if you reflect, remember, not just yeah, it says that yeah, Quran is rubbish. We should throw it in the trash. Oh. We should reflect. You know, reflect. Go, go do some science about it. If it's okay. wrong. Then it's wrong, but not just you see it straight. Yeah, it's rubbish. Trash it. So, how, what about this last one? What, what does one? that What does that mean to you? Um, Thirty six forty. How do you understand this? The sun shouldn't realize that the moon, like the day and the, the night, shouldn't be mixed together. You know, like these these verses makes us reflect. For us, it's something normal. Like exactly these kind of verses. Makes us like reflect, like there's something. Why? Why is it? Why is there a day? Why is there a moon? Why? Why are they separated? Why? Why? Why isn't there just a day? Why isn't there just a moon, a, a night? Why? Are, you see, like these things makes us reflect, and then it says all of them are swimming in an orbit, like around its axis. You know, the moon swims in its orbit, the sun swims in its orbit. 
like 40 years later, they used to think there's an error in the Quran because yeah. it says that it swims in orbit around, around its axis. But now that's scientifically confirmed. You know, my dad, my dad just learned at school that the earth is stationary. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> they used to learn it at school. It was like, there's, and then he saw it. it was like, the sun, me. you mean? The sun, not the earth. Yeah, yeah, the sun. Yeah, yeah. It's stationary. It doesn't go around its axis. Yeah. But we know that it runs around its axis for like 27 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't like there's, there's a there's, just yeah, it's, it's it runs around rubbish Quran. There's a there's a much more simple explanation that Muhammad thought the sun went around the earth. And I have I have why another, did, exactly why didn't he say it goes around the earth? Why did he say just uh spin? I, because because he didn't need to say it explicitly because that's what everybody believed at the time they they understood that's what he meant when he said that right I mean to me you see how you're looking at it you're looking at it like he's wrong no, because he's wrong, you know? yeah the reason I'm looking at it like that is because that's the explanation that makes the most sense and there's also hadith that make the situation even worse like the one that says that the sun goes below the throne of Allah <laughs> when it sets right I mean there's a hadith oh, yeah, like, you know yeah, yeah. So, so let me let me just jump to another verse. Is these are all interesting examples I have? You know about the hadith. There's other fabrications inside it, so I don't really touch it. But about okay. the Quran, if you want, we can discuss as much as you want. So let's talk about this one. Oh yeah! Oh my what? God! All oh, has problems with this. What does that mean? The moon when it follows it again? Doesn't it seem like Muhammad thought the moon was following the sun? I mean, let's let's be fair. Do, no, 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 no. Of course, it? look look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Here, here, this this shows you the geniusness behind the behind the Quran. How? It could mean one, it could mean that it's following the sun, and the second meaning, but this it needs a bit of juice, okay? So in the beginning it says Shams which means the author of the Quran is swearing by the by the sun, and where you notice in the middle there's the wow and it's brightness, but in Arabic, the word brightness is used duhaha, and this word we can only use for the sun. We can't use for the light. We can't use for anything. Not even the moon. We just use it for the sun. That's how the literature works. Okay. So, notice the the wow in the middle, as I said, wa duhaha, mm -hmm. like saying the sun itself and its soothing light duhaha. Okay, it's given a subservient position. Iza talaha. Well, Kamari, Ida, Talaha, and the moon when it follows it. Okay, Talaha is a subservient position. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Like in, in Arabic, there's some, there's an explanation. I'll explain it now. Yeah, but again, talaha like. It originates from the word Tali. Mm -hmm. Okay, Talaha means follows, Tali, right? Mm -hmm. It could mean recited, which comes from Tatlu Tilawatan, say a story or narrate a story, recite a story, whatever. Or. Uh, it could mean to follow along. So, so what is it following yeah. along? Yeah, no, no, no. It could mean like that. But if we, if we like, we examine it more, you know, there's a tikrar, so it keeps following it. You know, a tikrar in the Arab it means like the, the the rules of Arabic. We'll get to it now. Okay. So it's saying duha, which means the brightness of the sun, which is the source of light to humanity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a tafsir from Ash-Shawkani, which says, uh, meaning it follows the sun when it becomes full, a full circular moon. The moon follows the sun when it's a full circular moon. So what, what does it mean? He said, فَكَانَ يَتْلُوا الشَّمْسَ وَالنُّورِ Meaning, when its light becomes complete, the the, sun, uh, the moon, it's following the sun, so it's becoming like the sun, full light. Um. Know? Okay. Which means it's reflecting the sunlight upon it, which is the moon. You know, it's following the sun. There's also Al Fara. He explain. There's an uh, Al Fara. I don't know if you know him. Is that is an Iraqian? Like by the time, by the times of like uh, the Prophet, he said Tala. Could mean uh, which means take from. So what does you know? Like they didn't even used to know that they didn't used to come on in their mind that the moon is reflected light. Mm -hmm. This was by the time of the prophet. He said, "Hala," which means take, and he said, "What what does the moon take from the sun? The light. When it becomes full circular, it's taking all the light from it." 
So the moon is taking the light from the sun. You see, that's what I mean. There's like a geniusness behind the Quran. But it's not genius. It's just human beings who now know science and are saying, oh, look, it can mean something. No, 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 that... it wasn't science. It was like it was before science. It was like explaining the language no more. Okay, so I don't see how this is so amazing. Like the, the Quran saying the sun. I, Allah is saying, God is saying, I swear by the sun and its brightness. Okay, it's brightness, nothing, full, yeah. nothing amazing about that. And by the moon when it follows it, which seems like a clear air, but now you're saying it means... And by the moon, like, uh, when uh, 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 yeah, so hold on, uh, so you're, uh, yeah, okay. So you're saying, and by the moon, when it takes the light from the sun, I, I, I don't see how this is amazing. Is this amazing to you? This is like genius to you? This is amazing genius, to be honest. Yes, if you if you notice the language, if you speak Arabic, you will notice the genius that's behind it. Is it genius because it's 1400 years ago? It's just genius forever, like. Like if I wrote this today, is this genius or no? It's just the, la the language is the genius. It's not the scientific thing. To be yeah, honest, the language is genius. So, the, so language the language. Is, okay, so this is actually an interesting claim because I hear this a lot. The language of the Quran is so amazing that it has to be from Allah and it can't be from anybody else. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. So no human can write something like wal shamsi wal duhaha wal qamari talaha. That's that's beyond any human being ever in the eternity of humanity. To come up with like words like that? Yeah, certainly. I don't see how that's maybe, possible. Maybe not the whole verses exactly, but I mean like in general, the whole the, the whole yeah. in general. Okay. So to be written by human. Okay, let's let's move on to the next next question I have. Yeah. What do you I, think about you know it's unique? Some people say yeah, Shakespeare is also unique. No, Shakespeare is not unique. He's compared to a lot of uh, other rights. A lot. Okay. okay. So I have I have this example now for you. Uh, tell me what you think of this example. Do you not see that that Allah has subjected to you whatever is in the heavens and the ships that run through the sea by His command, and He restrains the sky from falling upon the earth unless by His permission. Indeed, Allah to the people is kind and merciful. What do you think about this? Now I don't know if you see the problem. The sky, Guys, yeah, the think that yeah. something sky doesn't fall down. Skies don't fall. Sky is space. What's like I told you, a sama. Sama, okay. Religious for this, okay? A sama it means anything above you. Mm -hmm. Universe, like uh, planets, stars, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or a second explanation, you know, in, in 2006, there was a research done by uh, by NASA and they published, uh, they published like an article it's called the sky is falling literally if you can check it on the internet isn't that isn't that a fairy tale chicken little it's like a kid's book chicken little says the sky is falling there's a little book for kids here in, in canada the, the sky is falling chicken little no no but it's, it's, a, it's from nasa it's from nasa okay so uh what is nasa saying the sky is falling like no it's not they're saying the sky, sky is falling there they called the title of the article the sky is falling but, but was that like a joke or something were they making no no, no they're the saying it <laughs> what? I'm saying, were they making fun of the Quran by saying the sky is falling? No, 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 no. no. But, but it's saying, it's saying, okay. So there's another, there's another similar. They're saying that there are like metric metroids, a metric ton of metroids yeah. hits the moon. You know, traveling up to a hundred thousand uh, miles per hour. Mm. And they, hit, okay. they, go, they they do not uh, disintegrate. Um, Harmlessly in the atmosphere, as most okay. of the, on the earth. So you see. So, so, so now the sama is meteors. Sorry. So now we're saying the sama is meteors. First, we're saying the seven layers of this of the atmosphere. Then we said that it has has stars I, I in it. Put it. As anything that's above you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I I would say actually it's 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 the problem is worse than that because he actually says Allah elected the heavens without pillars you can see. So oh. the problem is we're talking about uh, again, like no. you know, like again, you ancient. You understand I've, what pillars means? Yeah, like what, what? What's the function of pillars? To hold up something from falling on you. Does it matter how they look? Does it matter how they shape? Is doesn't matter anything? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's no. just a pillar. It doesn't matter. So okay. some, in, uh, in Arabic we say awamid. In Arabic, something like that. Something like this. Like this bottle, it's holding. It's holding, yeah. my, it's holding my hand. For example, it's pillars that you can see. And actually, scientifically, that's 
accurate as possible. You know why? Because it's a it's celestial planet. It rotates in uh, on, 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 a, on a fixed axis in its own position, right? Mm -hmm. The factor that supports them to to be fixed is their own particular rotation. Is the equilibrium, right? Resulted from the attractive and the repelling forces. So the forces are the, you know, are the pillars that we don't see. We don't see force. It's a pillar that you know that holds. So, like that. so, you, so you th you're saying the equilibrium of attractive and repelling forces is the unseen pillar. Okay, so so you're saying this is you describing it. Uh, this yeah. is describing a scientific phenomena of science. It's, it's true. We don't want to say it's describing. It's true. It's it's accordance. Uh, okay. Um, so it's not wrong. It's uh, not wrong that there was, this. There wasn't something called force and these things. So the simplest way was to explain it was like this. Well, well, it's wrong, and it's saying that this the sky is being held up. So again, you know. Part of the problem I had and the reason why I left Islam eventually was it wasn't just the fact that these verses seem to be wrong. It's the fact that the verses seem to be wrong. And at that time, Muhammad's understanding would have been wrong in the sense of anybody living at his time would have believed the sky was held up, would have believed in the seven, you know, Plato's seven spheres, uh, would have believed in all of these things as they, you know, Basically, like it, it, we have a situation where a man is writing stuff that basically seems wrong, and then we have Muslims coming up later on and reinterpreting it in a way that is somehow scientifically feasible. But but the reality is that in the first place, it's quite possible Muhammad was just wrong, and and that's the most likely explanation because you really have to stretch, right? Like it's it's back to Occam's laser where you have like a hundred assumptions you have to make versus a straightforward explanation that Muhammad just said it as he, as he believed it and it was wrong, right? But why did he, why did he leave it ambiguous enough to, to mean both yeah, ways? That's a good point. Why The Quran is you, actually- You can reach a verse that you can't explain it anymore. Impossible. He's a human at the end, so he, he well, must I, make a mistake. I, I do think this is a mistake. And, and I, like I said, Adam and Eve is a mistake too. This to I me, this is a this, uh, 21, uh, 2130. Yeah, so 2130 is. says the heavens and the earth were joined, but okay. how was the earth? It, doesn't say it says Ratka. Okay, what does that mean? Ratka, we say it for like the pregnant woman in, uh, in classical Arabic. In standard Arabic, we don't say it, but in classical Arabic, hmm? we say the woman is Ratka, it means she's pregnant. Does it mean the baby is inside her since the beginning, since she was existed? No, it doesn't mean it means it came on time. You know, we say to a woman when she gives birth, she's separated. You know, so the Quran only uses this word once, yeah, in the Quran, and the translation is a joined entity because there's no word in English for that. So, so, that's so how would you, so how, how do you, how do you translate this? How do you, I, I give you an example, Ratka, we say to the we can't, we can't explain it in English, so, so you can explain it in English because. Example. No, of course you can explain it in English because uh, Arabic is a language of symbols and symbols have meanings, right? Mm. So like clearly it's like it's, it's the best one was joined. joined. Yeah. So if if they were joined, the earth never existed at the time of the Big Bang. How can you say they were joined? But That's same as the woman when we say it was Ratka, the baby didn't exist always inside her. No? Um I don't know. To me, this is a clear. This is a clear mistake. Terminology to explain it. To to me, this is a clear mistake. Like the, to me, this is like a knock, a drop dead argument that the Quran is wrong. It says that the heavens and the earth were joined. This is. English example. doesn't make any sense. I completely agree. With only you. it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. See, all of these things I'm telling you, they make perfect sense at Muhammad's time. They okay. Look, not only that. If you look at the the language used, right? Allahu. Allah raised up the heavens. If you look at the, the ancient beliefs, right? This is right in line with the ancient beliefs, right? We're talking about, uh, for example, the Greeks who said there was only water in the beginning and then he separated the sky from the sea. The people in India, the Dama in India, the that's, heaven and earth. That's a masterpiece, you know? That's why I see the masterpiece. Because but this is not a masterpiece. This is just ancient. But let me tell you why I see it as a masterpiece. Because it's in line with both the 21st century and the 7th century. 
but that's no it's not in line with the 25th century it's in line with the 7th century and before where everybody believed and everybody had to come up with their own ideas of how the universe worked and what did they do they believed that god raised up the heaven because if you look up at the sky you're like how the hell did the sky get up there and the rain is coming you know they used to believe it was a physical firmament that's why they used firmament the word firmament and eventually we figured out oh, this actually space there's nothing there if you keep going up you're not going to hit the ceiling right but many ancient people used to believe the sky was raised up and it's even held up by pillars right that's why when i showed you those pictures right like there's many there's many pictures of this where it shows the the you know like the little the dome right it's like one of those little balls you buy with the snow inside it the little snow globes oh, yeah. Yeah. so that's what people used to believe so the problem is we have muhammad writing something that not just seems like seventh century it's what everybody thought back then there's nothing unique about it it's just but repeating the same it's ambiguous enough to be in line with both well that's that like okay so the the quran is ambiguous but that doesn't mean it's not wrong right like you're right that if it's ambiguous it can you can weasel out of anything but again if you want to look at you can either look at it as a red flag or you look at it as an error if it's not an error it's at least a red flag right I would, I would rather say it's ambiguous it's because, because it's not for both not just for them not just for us then it's an even bigger problem because we have thousands and thousands of years more to go where people will say oh look at this it looks like 7th century language right no like, when, it, when it's this proved just like one one verse is this proved by science by established science not just theories by established science then we can say this book is rubbish but we can't say that yet because there's nothing that really can disprove it the language is left ambiguous enough so whether it was written by muhammad or was written by god whoever wrote is, is smart and i actually don't i actually in in some sense i don't blame you you know i don't blame you because yeah. if you read it in arabic and you have like good knowledge of arabic it you you'll see a masterpiece you won't see a, like 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 for example when he says uh they will come from front and from back from right and from left in the quran it says shaitan yeah no 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 just anyone mm -hmm. he comes from min men uh he comes mina like uh, from front but men and from back men and from the sides he says an men is used for a distance close like there's a distance that is close an is far and notice the language an because there are like uh he believed that there are like angels on your back on your shoulder who okay. cares about this deep language like that much no i i don't okay what are you saying like what's amazing about this men is used for like uh, a long distance like this and that mm -hmm. men for that men for this like it's close distance and an is for like a, a, a far distance okay okay so he, he said he comes men from forth men from back men and from the sides he said an because on, on your we will uh, like uh, we believe angels, yeah that they, that are angels notice the accuracy of the language he said an who, who cares that he, they should be so accurate but who cares about that in general yeah but who cares about that in general like why is that so amazing okay so he used a word that they're coming from a distance you know that's, he, that's like one and i'm just saying one, but there's like you know they, but, they pile up but don't you agree that like if someone believes this book is from god and we're talking about like billions of like a billion plus people people mm -hmm. are gonna dig in that book they're gonna dig and dig and dig and they're gonna find things they're gonna find oh look this is cool because of this and this is cool it's like a it's like a project where someone your teacher says okay i'm gonna give you a paragraph i want you guys to find all the themes in that paragraph and you just give a bunch of kids like 12 kids and you give them half an hour and they'll come up with all of these themes you should be good to your parents you should always think before you act you should always you know look both ways like you can come up with a hundred different things like if you if you want to dig and dig you're gonna dig you're gonna find a lot of stuff there's nothing amazing about i mean it in terms of a literally a literary piece of work there's much better than the quran like the Quran is a, is is a bunch of like rep repetitive stories over and over again. A lot of it is saying you're gonna go to hell if you don't do this. You're gonna go to hell. The disbelievers. This. What about what about the women's rights in the Quran? What do you think about that? Can you tell me one thing that this goes against women's rights? Sorry. 
and you give me one example that's against women rights. You know that women right like okay, women for example by Islam back then. Say say that again. History testifies on that, not not me. History. Because they used to kill women, like uh, babies. Yeah. So they're a shame. The interesting thing is that. Um, oh, are you talking about what? Exactly? Okay. So, so uh, I'm not totally sure if that's true that they used to bury the daughters alive, but let's just take it to be true because that's what the Quran says. History. History. Well, when I looked it up, there was a ancient Arabic historian that said there's no actual evidence that the people at the time of Muhammad actually buried their daughters alive. It, the Quran actually kind of hints towards this, but let's not go there. Let's just assume it's true. So the Quran does something right. It stopped people from killing their daughters. And let's let's just take that for granted. Uh, Muhammad in the Hadith, he said, uh, whoever raises a daughter, you know, you get some special reward or something. So there's some yeah. good things. Let's, let's just take all of that for granted. Okay. However, I do think that the Quran actually does something really bad, and that's the voice. The divorce laws, the divorce laws in Islam, the talaq laws, you are just completely, one word when you're done. Yeah. completely unjust, completely <laughs> immoral, like like nonsensical, like not well thought out. Like you know, Islamic law is so ridiculous. I can just say talaq, talaq. Like I, a lot of people think that I that I'm talking about triple talaq, which actually at the time of Muhammad, triple talaq was was done. Where someone would say, "You're divorced. You're divorced. You're divorced," and the, the marriage is over. And in the hadith, they actually went to Muhammad and or one of the companions and he actually allowed it. And that's but forget that. Even without triple talaq, which many scholars say is haram, even if you do the talaqs properly according to Islamic law, mm. you will still end up with a terrible, terrible system for women. A man simply has to just say talaq or he can just scare her. You know, she has to live in fear that he can say talaq and the marriage is over, over a matter of months, right? Women cannot do that. Women have to go and ask a judge for an annulment. Um, you know, for example, just the fact that even a man can just lose his cool in, in the spur of the moment and say talaq and then regret it, right? I mean, it happened to me. Like I actually said a couple of times I got really angry and I said talaq or I said I divorce you. And you can even put like the most strangest type of conditions. If you don't bake me a birthday cake, you are divorced. If you don't come see my mom, you are divorced. If you and don't this guy doesn't deserve to be married. You, you can even do it. Like even like suppose you are a couple. If you don't yeah. do it, we'll break up with you. So it's the same. No, it's not the same because in Islam, like I can say that to my wife right now. If you don't bake me a cake, I'm leaving you. But then I can still come and kiss her and you know sleep with her and nothing happens. But in Islam, if I say that, I'm doing zina. I'm now committing adultery because I actually said you are divorced and I'm still sleeping with her. You know, and there's a bigger picture that we don't see. Possibly there's a possibility. I'm not sure. Possibly it's because to teach us to control our words. I don't know. There's a bigger picture. No, it doesn't teach you that because human beings... Subject, you know? No, I don't, I don't think it teaches you anything. It, it te what it shows is Muhammad made up a law that didn't make any sense. And so in order to, to save his you know, terrible, you know, law, what did he do? He put an even greater consequence that if you want to get your wife back, she has to go and get married to another man, have sexual intercourse with him, and then you can get her back. Hmm. And that's to make people scared, like men to, to be scared to do that. But like in, in a real relationship, if I want to break up with my wife, it's not over what I say. It's not magical words that I say to her. Like we will actually discuss it. And if I leave or if she leaves or she goes to her mom's house, we can actually, you know, in Canada, the law is you have to wait one year. You have to be separated for a period of time. And in that period of time, you can still get back together. Right? There's no harm. And even if we actually divorce, we wait one year, I can still get back to her. She doesn't have to have sex with another man. Like, what's the point of that? That's so stupid. Like, I, I have to say Islamic law is stupid. It's so dumb. It's so backwards. It's it's just it's just one man's opinion how things should work, but it doesn't there's no thought process behind it. Like, what, what else do you think is ridiculous? Like like the, the other thing which I find ridiculous is <laughs> that like men can actually um, hit women. Hit women? Are you talking about the verse in the Quran? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, chapter four, yeah, chapter 4, verse 34. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw it. It doesn't say directly hit them. It says like, uh, first like talk to them or advise them. Yeah. And then, 
Yeah, you know, so basically, those wait, wise... Strike them is wrong. No, no, strike them is wrong. It's completely wrong. Not strike them. It says hit. It doesn't say strike. You see? Where's so... It? It, it's, it says, yeah, it says hit them, right? It's, yeah, hit them. No, no, it doesn't say strike. Strike means jald, ejled. Yes. No, no, no. Actually, there's also an explanation for this. You know the siwak, the toothbrush? Yeah. Just like this, you know? Just like this. Okay, so so, so the Quran is... If you want to her, the Prophet said, it shouldn't leave a mark. It shouldn't... At least it shouldn't leave a mark. So a toothbrush, you know, like this. So, so if I fear, so I don't even have to have an actual, like it, it says, if you fear the shoes, then you can take these steps. So a woman actually has no sort of, you know, she, there's nothing she can do. It's all what the man gets to do. And the man gets to hit it with a toothbrush. You bad woman. I'm going to smack you with a toothbrush. <laughs> like, what's the point of that? Like, is this made by a clown? Is this, is, this, is this religion made by a clown or by God? Like slapping people with toothbrushes, like I, ninja, I, ninja fighting. If you never, never, never hit your wife, like never, you never touch her, yeah. right? Yeah. And you reached a point that she's doing something so wrong. No, but it doesn't say that. It says if you fear. It, that looks different, okay? It doesn't even say she has to do anything bad. It says you just fear, right? You fear so elegance. Second, you you don't sleep with her. Third, you hit her with a toothbrush, right? You know, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it won't make sense to be nothing, but for women are sensitive, you know? Yeah, so you why know? would you? So, why, but, but you, do you get my point about this? Takafuna? Do you understand, like, yeah, yeah, why yeah, I have yeah. a problem with that? Like, I'm saying, I'm saying that this doesn't make sense that just because you fear. You fear like, their rebellion. Something yeah, like you it's... fear their rebellion, which means they're disobeying you, they're not being good wives, and then you just, you can do all these things, but that's not right. Again, it doesn't seem like God wrote this. It so looks you like think a having a discussion with your wife is wrong. I don't know. No, I don't think having a discussion with her is wrong. I think beating her for fearing. What does, do you really call hitting with a brush beating like this? I, I don't think she, I should hit her with a brush. No, I don't think that makes sense. That it doesn't look like. It's not like uh, late or after, you know? After yeah, you but, talk, and she's still doing it, you know? But, but yeah. why is it always a woman's fault? What, what if the man is being bad? Can she hit him with a toothbrush? No, she can, can she put. Huh? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about these things. I don't know. No, you, she people. can't do that. She can't hit him with. But even if you hit a man with a toothbrush, it's useless because. So the clan's useless then. Why? The clan's useless. You just said if hitting with the toothbrush is useless, useless, so then it's if useless. You hit a man with a toothbrush, it's useless. The women are sensitive. You know, you never hit your wife in your life. You, you advised her. She didn't listen. You didn't sleep with her. She didn't listen. You hit her with a toothbrush. You know, she feels like there's something wrong. Is it so like time? Like wake up. Do do Muslims sell special brand of toothbrushes that are like for hitting, like <laughs> spiky ones or something? <laughs> I think it makes sense to be honest. If you think, it, if, you think like that. if honestly, if I told you this was in Mormonism or Scientology, you would say this would, is stupid. Still makes sense for me, I'm not, I'm not looking at it from Islam. I'm looking at it from like as a sign. You're just giving her a sign, you know, like toothbrush. You, you, you won't leave a mark. You won't hit her on the face. Just on her hand like this. Yeah. You're just like giving her a warning, like wake up and mad or whatever you know like you're you're going in the wrong path yeah but it's always it's always the woman going in the wrong path isn't it it's no, always it's, all it's the power you know what i don't like what i don't like about islam is mm -hmm. it gives all the power to men and it puts all of the like burden what? on women all of the power the power to divorce the power to smack with toothbrushes the power to mm -hmm. put it in a way like and the woman's not even allowed to deny you sex in islam no, 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 no. Of course, both. They are like she doesn't want. It's her problem. Of course not. Of course, she is. the angels will curse her till morning, right? Latnut on on what? her. That's what, the, what? That's the first time you're hearing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can show you that. It's it's basically. Uh... <laughs> oh, hadith. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, most of the hadith are rubbish. Yeah. So then, doesn't that bring up another problem then? If most of the hadith are rubbish, Allah didn't preserve his religion then? Possibly, I don't know. But the important thing for us is the Quran, it's not the hadith. The hadith yeah. is like an extra. It's not the main source. So so I, I've taken up a lot of your time. Um, no problem, no problem. Do you want to, like, I know it's late for you. You're in, uh, you're, it's very, very late for you right now. And you must be tired. You had a long day. 
Do you want to say anything else before we before we end it? Because I um, I've been talking a lot. Do you is there anything you want to add? Or, do you want to give your contact info? Should I should I put a link to your Facebook or anything like that? Would you like to people to be able to contact you or do you want to do this again sometime? I can give you my email. Okay. Do you want to put it publicly? You can. You're most welcome to. Go ahead. Yeah. What should I? Put? Uh, you can you send it to me in the chat and I'll I'll paste it. Um, okay. and I'll put it in the description. Okay, guys. So I, I just want to, okay, do you, I'll just add some comments and you can make final comments and then we'll just end it. I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you to Noor. This was an amazing conversation and I really appreciate this conversation. I was, I was scared. I was nervous to have this conversation, uh, but I'm, it, people don't realize it, but it's, it's tough to do this. It's damn tough to come online, to put your reputation on the line, to talk in front of people. It's hard. So honestly, um, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for Noor. Like this was a great conversation to have publicly. We never discussed before me and him. So this was like, like a private conversation we could have had that we had publicly that all of you guys, because of Noor's generosity of having this public, all of you guys can benefit from this conversation. All of us can, can you know, be involved and can, can, can be, you know, part of the discussion basically, right? We didn't really take any, dis any comments. It's kind of difficult to read the comments and, and discuss and debate at the same time. But I, I, I really do appreciate Noah. Noor. I, I see you as a sincere truth seeker, just like Thank myself. You. I think that, you know, whether you are Muslim or not Muslim, to me, you are still my friend. I, I don't care. I really have no problem with you believing. And why should I? It's your life. Like, it's your choices. It's your, you know, in your case, it, you believe in the Day of Judgment. I don't. But but it's, it's totally for you to do what you like. And I really appreciate that. Uh, would you like to add anything? No, I just mean like you see, we do, we don't have any evidence to not believe. There's like nothing but contradictory. It's ambiguous. You see, that's that's what I mean. It's ambiguous. Yeah. So it's not contradictory. It's ambiguous. There's a big difference. That's what I mean. And uh, I would agree to I disagree. Don't blame you as an English speaker, I, I I really don't blame you. It's like I understand your point as like an. Uh, an yeah, but. I, Unfortunately, 95% of the world, if not more, doesn't speak Arabic. So again, yeah. like Allah has left the situation like that. It's not my fault. It's Allah's fault. Like he, he's given a tiny minority of the world preferential access to... But there's like an argument called uh, rational deduction, you know? It's like if you have higher authorities that confirms that there's nothing like it and it's legit, you should, you should trust it because they know what they're talking about. No. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, just want to end there. Uh, again, thank you to the audience and everyone who actually made it all the way to the end. Um, and again, to Noah, everybody else as well, thank you so much. If you have a chance, please check out my blog at Uh Also check out, I'm, I'm trying to raise some money to take this to the next level. So I would really appreciate if you guys want to check out my Patreon. It's just patreon.com slash Samir. Um, I need to get a better camera and there's some other stuff I need to invest in. <sighs> so please do check it out. If you can, if you can afford to support me financially, I would most appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you can afford it, thank you so much. If not, that's okay as well. Just continue sharing the content and having these discussions. Thank you, Noah, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Goodbye.